Well, good evening, YouTube friends and fans. Tonight, I'm going to finish up the sub panel installation. And so stick around. Had to modify it to make it work. Show you what we did. KZ Creations, thanks you for watching. Please press the red subscribe button for more featured videos in the future. Now on with the show. So, what we got going on here is brought in main power from the main panel. Taking power out to another sub panel which is for the RV, which you saw in a previous video I installed. If you want to give that a watch, I'll show it up here in the link. So what I got going on, I've upgraded this. This was a main panel. And so what happens is, I had to upgrade to a 125 amp. And the reason I had to upgrade to 125 is because I'm feeding a 100 amp panel out for the RV. So this panel, now has a disconnect here, a breaker, also has a breaker out there as well. And the same thing for here and the main panel. I have a 125 in both spots. So technically I can kill it in both locations. So let me show you what happened. Since this was a main panel to begin with, the grounds and neutrals can be combined. And if you don't know what this is, you should not be in an electric panel. So this is technically, it could be a neutral bar or a ground bar, but for me, I'm using it as a ground bar. So the problem I had before was I had half of this bar, okay? You can see this or not. This hole and this hole are technically big enough for this one out wire. Well, my problem was the hold downs. I'm yelling at. That hold this bar to the panel were right there. So I only had one lug, and I've got two big ground wires I need to ground. Not including any future wires. Like I plan on running a plasma cutter. I have a welder out here. You know, if I want to run a dedicated compressor later. I was out of spots for bigger wire. So the rest of them were pretty much just small stuff. This one has a little bit bigger holes and some smaller. So, but I do have to modify it because there is no mounting hole for these screws. So let's go to the workbench and make it happen. All right, so first things first. We're going to measure out the screw that I have to put in. And if you've never opened up a handyman magazine in the mail, they usually send these to you. Looks like 316, so I want to go just here bigger than that. There we go. I'm not going to use their hole down because I want to use my original holes. I don't want to have to tap the panel. So, a little sacrificial piece of uh, foam here. Yeah, I was trying to save the uh, drill bit.
and that's hard on the old drill bit. Just a little bit of a burr back here. That feels pretty good. All right, let's go to the panel and reinstall. So now, hopefully we can install this. Uh, you're probably gonna have a hard time seeing past me. Let me see if I can turn the camera and get you a better angle. Get up there. Everything seems real good. Seems solid to me. So now I just got to put the one wire in. Got to put a little antioxidant compound on it. You want to protect it as much as you can. Aluminum does want to corrode. Back her a little further, and in she goes. Now I did not tighten up my uh, hots because I wanted to make sure I had enough room to get that wire in just in case. Now I'll tighten it all up. That one I already tightened up. All right, so we got one last ground to install. Get this bad boy stripped. And we'll wrap this video up. I think I'm gonna come down to here, so. A little more grease on it. Get in there. Well, folks, 
that's it. The panel is basically done. And of course, the last step is to install the panel cover. Let's see if it'll stay there without falling. What do you think? Well, if one screw stays in, it ain't gonna fall over. Oh, come on. So as you can see, I do have an open spot. And instead of buying a bunch of covers for the open holes, I'm using a lot of leftover breakers. And I did buy four covers. So and they just pop in like this, protects anybody from doing something they shouldn't do. Alrighty friends. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like what we've accomplished tonight. And you can see where everything used to be when it was in the house. So that's pretty interesting. It'll probably take us back off eventually, ain't it? Just to get rid of all that stuff. I'll throw the power and see if we got lights outside. The unit out here works correctly or not. Apologize, it's dark. Shouldn't be for very long. And yeah, we got throw breakers yet. Hey, we got light. That means it's working. Got our uh, circuit breaker tester for the RV. And two yellow lights mean it working correctly. Polarity's correct, all that. No need to turn on the big 50 amp. Unless we get a bigger RV or somebody comes over with a big RV, so. Thanks, friends. Catch you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, hit that bell for notification. Thanks for watching.